Hello everyone and welcome back to Taito Ecology and it has been a little while since we have dived into the beautiful biomes that we've been growing in Taito Ecology for several months now but I'm very excited to be back because there is actually a brand new DLC pack out right now for the Alaskan Tundra Biome. I'm so excited. The Himalaya Forest DLC that came out last time was so amazing. It definitely produced some of my favorite biomes, some of my favorite episodes we've ever Ever made going on those adventures. Do you guys remember all of those little pika? Oh my gosh, they were everywhere! And then the way that we had so many beautiful, beautiful bamboo forests, and we had all of those red pandas running everywhere. Basically, if you haven't seen what we've gotten up to in the Himalayan forest biome, you definitely want to go check that out. I really miss it. Bamboo Grove is what we named it, and I really want to go back and check it out pretty soon. And I've definitely received a kick to return to Taito after we have started playing the online version of Taito, Taito Online, which is an early access online multiplayer game, and it has been a lot of fun to merge science and adventure and curiosity all of the things I am always trying to put out there in the world and provide to you guys into one and I do want to return to Taito online pretty soon because that's so much fun to explore an alien world but we're gonna step away from the alien world in Taito online and flip back over to Taito ecology in order to explore the brand new DLC content I mean look at that there's a big moose do you know how big moose are I looked it up the other day and they're like taller than me just at the shoulder I'm only five foot five and your average moose is like six foot at the shoulder that's just that's like practically an elephant you know when you're only so short that's about what it adds up to but okay let's go ahead and we're going to dive into the alaskan tundra we're going to turn the tutorial off because we have been through this a time or two and it lists the precipitation and the temperature is zero degrees celsius Ooh, and if you guys are in the united states like i am don't forget to run the zero degrees celsius through on google if you need to in order to understand everything in fahrenheit it's a really good idea to try to remember the celsius scale but but I have never managed to pull that off because I have number dyslexia, so I can't recall off the top of my head what zero degrees Celsius is. I believe it's freezing, and I think that's like 32 Fahrenheit. So just remember that it's freezing here. When it rains, it's going to snow. So all of the precip precip precipitation that comes down, I'm sorry, I have a cold, so I apologize if I'm kind of tripping over my tongue. But all of the precipitation that comes down is going to be snow, and this looks really pretty. Look at these pine cones. Okay, okay, enough babbling. The Alaskan tundra is a harsh biome with short summers and long freezing winters. Most plants grow very low to the ground to withstand high winds, and many animals have white coats to blend in with the snow during the winter time. Despite its unforgiving climate, Alaska is home to a wide variety of flora and fauna. So let's go ahead and create our biodome. Bearberry, that's so cute. Okay, we're gonna name it. I wanna name it Silverberry. So this is the name of our new Alaskan biome is Silverberry. There we go, okay. Can we zip around? <gasps> it's snowing! Oh my gosh, that's so cool. That's so cool. Look, we have a little lake down here. Okay, let's back up a little bit and look around. It has been a long time since I have jumped into Taito ecology so who knows what has changed oh the camera's nice and smooth there's just snow coming down everywhere this is so cool all right we don't have any life inside of this biome just yet so let's go ahead and pull back i want to get a really good view of everything there we go so as usual we are starting off with a contained biome and i believe we can go ahead let's see no notifications can I go ahead and buy the new zones? We have a lot of Taito coins left over from successful production on our other biomes. You can have up to six biomes at a time. So let's go ahead and just spend the Taito coins to unlock these. Yeah, I think it'll be worth it to just unlock the entire area. So now we can go to the entire map because I have just taken away the barriers by using up the Taito coins that we had collected from our other biomes, which you guys can see in the playlist if you're curious. Oh my gosh, we've had lots of adventures on those. I'm so excited to be back. Okay, without further ado, let's start getting... <gasps> Look at all of these things! Oh my goodness, there's so many things. Let's start getting some of this life added in. We have diamond leaf willows. So let's see what those look like. Might come down here and put some of those in. So diamond leaf willow. Hmm, that sounds like a little plant. So let's see. Come here, you. Oh, you're so tiny. You're so itty bitty. Yeah, okay. And oh, we can press spacebar to rearrange the plants now. What? There's been so many updates. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so pleased that they're still coming out with DLC for it too. Oh, look at that. 
yet? I didn't know they were. Oh my gosh. So hopefully they'll have even more. And apparently in Taito Online, we can actually visit the biomes that we have managed. Like not these specific ones, but you can visit biomes in Taito Online just like these biomes. That's so cool. So this is a diamond leaf willow. And every time you put a plant down or any kind of creature, uh, you use up a little bit of energy. And that energy regenerates over time. Right now, the biome health is at 100% because these plants are very happy. They have a lot of the leaf attribute, which means some of the animals dun, 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 that we have will be happy to eat them if they are leaf eaters. So we have the Arctic ground squirrel, which is an omnivore, and we'll get about eight of them in every group that we put down. And they can actually have lots of babies. They can reproduce. And when there become enough of them, they'll start spreading out into the world. But only if there's something for them to eat. They'll only be successful if they have somewhere to hide, something to eat, something to keep them alive. We also have the Arctic Fox, the Arctic Hare, the Ermine. We have the Arctic Bumblebee. What? I need to do some research on an Arctic Bumblebee. Are you kidding? A Bumblebee living in this kind of snow? That's awesome. Then we have Lemmings. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Herbivore and they're extra small. Oh, I want to unlock them. Let's go ahead and unlock those guys. We'll get some little Lemmings like piled up. Maybe like a little, a little Lemming Lake. Oh, we could turn this into a Lemming Lake. That's so cute. But of course, Lemmings, which are little herbivores, would definitely attract some of the carnivores who'd be very happy to eat them, such as the Lynx. Oh, there's an arctic wolf oh my gosh you guys are gonna freak out about that we've got caribou wolverine grizzly bear polar bear and moose oh that's gonna be so much fun so those are all of the different animals we have to pick from some of them will have to spend taito coins to unlock some of them we've already unlocked there's also several plants which is totally awesome because the the animals will need to eat some of the animals will eat each other. Some of the animals, like the Arctic ground squirrel, even though it li is listed as an omnivore, so it might eat some of the other small creatures too. But the Arctic hare, as an herbivore, is probably going to be interested primarily in just eating the plants that we have out. The plants, by the way, will also propagate over time if they are not eaten completely up by the animals that are out there. Too many animals? then all of the plants will be eaten. It's all about managing that delicate balance of an ecosystem. Which, fun fact, if I sound like I know what I'm talking about, I kind of do because this used to be my job, working with elementary school children, teaching them the basics of ecology. It's been a little while, so if I'm rusty around the edges, just let me know nicely in the comments because it's always more important to be able to share appropriate knowledge and accurate knowledge with each other than for me to just sit here with a cold and a fuzzy brain going, diamond leaf willows, oh my goodness, and say wrong facts about them. Fun thing about this particular game as well is you can also open up your bio decks and we can look up all sorts of information about all of the different plants that we're bumping into, including their Latin name, which is excellent if you want to look it up on something like Wikipedia or other websites to see what they really are. Sometimes the common name of a creature or a plant will actually give you multiple results, so it's really good to have the Latin name to use now and then. And then you get all sorts of information about the interactions, the uses, extra notes about these different plants and about the different animals too. So let's check out the Arctic ground squirrel actually. So what do they eat? Since they are omnivores, that means they will eat both plants and animal matter. So what is it that they eat mostly? All right, Art Alaskan, uh, did you do Arctic ground squirrel? There we go. Foragers at heart, Arctic ground squirrels eat plants, invertebrates, eggs, birds, and carrion. When pressed, they even eat small rodents like lemmings. Oh my gosh, they might eat our lemmings. Oh, I, I mean... If this, is, if this ground squirrel is anything the size of the fox squirrels we have here in Michigan, I could see that happening. The majority of their diet, however, consists of plant matter. That's very interesting. And I think I saw, yeah, the grizzly bear is over here too. But one of the interesting things that I learned in the recent months about the black bear is that I thought black bears would eat a lot of animal matter the way that I think grizzly bears and um, like polar bears will eat a lot of animals. But it turns out the black bear, a huge majority of its diet is actually just berries and nuts and about like 85% of what it eats is mostly plants. So I thought that was very interesting. So we want to watch out for these ground squirrels because they may come over and eat our precious lemmings. Oh, and look at the reproduction on those lemmings. So they will probably reproduce pretty quickly. And if we 
flip around up here, we can even find notes on their reproduction. Female lem lemmings experience postpartum estrus, so they may be open to mating again shortly after giving birth to a litter. So basically, as soon as a female lem lemming has her babies, then she'll be able to go ahead and get pregnant and have more babies. Kind of reminds me of guinea pigs. They do the same thing. So if you happen to get a male and female guinea pig from the pet store by accident, you can end up with many babies. I am speaking from experience. All right, but we don't want to let too much more time pass in our biome without actually putting down any of these plants or any of the animals because as time passes, the plants are already getting ready to go through their pollination. Oh, yay! We got the Green Thumb Award. Green Thumb from Tundra. Gardening is fun. You'll need lots to support the moose. Ooh, good warning. A uh, hungry moose could probably come and eat all of our population of these diamond leaf willows in no time. So we'll want to put down tons of these. Whoops, and it has some fish, huh? So we've got lots of fish in this. Wonderful. I bet that'll be really useful for something like the Arctic fox. I don't know if the Arctic fox would like bother with the fish. Oh no, is that gonna be stuck there forever? There, did I get rid of it? Ah! Curse you fish. So we've got the curse of the fish to deal with for just a second. All right, let's see. And again, oh, there we go. Apologies if my voice is a little funky. I actually have a cold and that's what made me think about this, this expansion that I had seen while I was on Christmas break. There we go. So it looks like if I want to get close enough, can I get him any closer? Oh man, I can't get the plants any closer than this, it seems. So I can at least put down a little line of these diamond leaf willows. Okay, so it seems like that is as close as I can get to the lake, at least with these guys. So let's see if we have some bigger plants, because if we're going to get some of those bigger animals, they need to be able to eat something more than just these teensy tiny little things. I'm not even sure if this is going to be enough for our lemming population. So we have cotton grass, field horsetail, pasqui flower. I have no idea if that's pronounced correctly, so I need to look that up. Uh, the tuft saxifrage, I think I've heard of that one. And again, apologies if my pronunciation is off a little bit. We'll look that up in the future. Purple saxifrage, bearberry. Now this is really good. You see right here, the bearberry has a fruit listing as well. And look how small this list is. There are not very many things that are going to grow quite happily here in the Arctic tundra area. So that's very fascinating. There's just a short list of plants. It makes a lot of sense. We're going to see a lot more plants in our jungle biome than we would here in our frosty arctic biome. So let's go ahead and unlock some of them like the white spruce and let's unlock the bearberry. The bearberry, oh look how much bigger it is. So cool. The bearberry is really good for us because it has a fruit listing. Do you guys see that too? So that fruit is going to feed some of our small creatures, some of our small herbivores like those lemmings or maybe the arctic hare. And there we go. And the more that those guys can eat and thrive off of these plants, the more babies they'll have. The more babies they'll have, then the more food there will be for our predators. So it's all connected and our job is to try to balance the whole ecosystem in this gigantic biome and get everything living and dying and having babies and eating and breeding all successfully as possible. It's, it's not really about making any one species thrive over the other because if you guys remember the horror of what happened when we started messing around with um, with all of those, oh, those field mice, all of the field mice in the prairie and not Kansas. Oh, that was just chaos. If you end up with too many of certain creatures, then you're going to have such an imbalance that you're going to have your whole ecosystem collapse. If you have even something as small as the mouse, have hundreds and hundreds of mice, they were a wave of destruction and locusts. They just ate everything in their path and there was nothing left behind them and they were dying of starvation because they had bred so quickly and they had bred to the point that they out ate everything. The plants couldn't survive long enough to have new plants grow. They couldn't recover from being eaten and regrow their leaves. And then they even started eating some of the other creatures. It was chaos. So you want to keep everything in balance. That's what this is all about. All right, so let's go ahead and we can actually speed things up a little bit. And let's try to make a nice little forest over here just to get us started. And we'll see how much we can cover the ground here. I'll put down a couple more white spruce just for a second. But let's see what kind of forest we can get set up over here, maybe with some arctic hares and some lemmings. So I'm not sure if this is enough to support a lemming population just yet. So let me go ahead. 
Oh, and we're also going to need to remember our decomposer. So every healthy ecosystem, I'm going to spend all of our Taito coins unlocking all of these things. But every healthy ecosystem is going to need decomposers as well. Yay, plenty of plants. We just unlocked the new achievement, plenty of plants for the tundra area because we have unlocked all of the tundra plants. So awesome. And let's see, decomposers are going to be what break down the dead material. And there's in life, there's going to be death. And if you don't have things that will break down the dead bodies, you don't have things that will break down the poop that will end up coming out of the creatures as well, then you lock those nutrients in. You have to have the cycle constantly going. So decomposers are actually very, very, very important. This decomposer, the caribou moss, is poisonous. What? This decomposer is poisonous. It can only be eaten by certain marked composers or consumers, excuse me. <gasps> That's so useful. Look how much moss there is. We're going to go ahead and get that, even though it's expensive. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of put it down. All right, the fish don't want it too close to them. I'm going to put it down here. Whoa, it's huge. I had no idea it would be so big. So this is the caribou moss. Apparently, because it's poisonous, um, it will have a range for like decomposing things around it, I suppose. But because it's poisonous, I'm hoping nothing will eat it. Because if we had a whole bunch of our creatures eating the mushrooms, I love mushrooms and they're so cute. But we've learned in the past, when we put down these mushrooms, we have to be careful because some of the small creatures like the mice and things like that love to eat mushrooms. Look, the mushrooms are showing up. Oh, they're so cute. See, when you put them down, uh, like when you put a new mushroom down, they have this big giant circle and so they will show up anywhere inside of that circle and just kind of popping up unexpectedly. Oh gosh, they're so adorable. I really, really love mushrooms. I just think they're so cute. And let's put down some of this cotton. Oh my gosh, the cotton grass is so tiny. And some of these things, the longer you leave them alone, Oh, cotton grass, hold still for a second. Oh, you're so cute. But some of these things, the longer you leave them alone, the more that they will actually start to spread because if they don't have enough prey that are going to come or like they don't have anything that's going to prey on them I should say then they will actually keep spreading their seeds and you'll end up with so many plants it can be quite pretty let's put down some oh my gosh these little purple plants are so much smaller than I thought they would be let's tuck you guys in there then all right looks like this is going to be our main our main little cluster Ugh, I forgot how much fun this was and let's speed things up a little bit I think we can probably risk getting a herbivore or two in here. We have some big trees We've got some moss. We've got some mushrooms In fact, the mushrooms can now serve as a food source for some small creatures So why don't we go ahead and start with the arctic hare and Maybe the lemming. I think those would be two good things to start with. Oh, and we definitely need our pollinator So let's get the arctic bumblebee first actually doesn't sound that exciting, but I think the Arctic bumblebee will be very important. I put it inside. Oh, it has a little... What? What? This is so cool. Look at that. The Arctic bumblebee actually has... Whoops, a daisy. Sorry about that. Actually has... Um, a little ground nest. We're gonna have to look that up. And as you can see, we just got some Taito coins. So the more diversity of animals and plants we have, then the higher the Taito coin result we will get for managing our biome successfully every month. So that's how we get those Taito coins back. And in our jungle biome, in our Himalaya biome, we have so much diversity that we get tons and tons of Taito coins every every month. But here we only have like bees, moss, and a couple pine trees. So or spruce trees, excuse me but oh man next time come here little arctic bumblebee what do you mean you live inside of a a little hang on come on they live in the arctic notes let's see they the yeast bumblebees are one of only two types of bees that can survive near freezing temperatures that's so cool why do they live in a big old colony that's in the ground that's just so awesome I'm gonna have to look that up. Let's see, parasitic relationship. There's so much information. We'll have a lot of fun going through these one by one in a little bit, but I definitely wanna get some more, definitely wanna get some more plants down. And now that we have a pollinator, very important to have a pollinator if you're going to get some of those plants to reproduce. Without a pollinator, they may not be able to move the pollen from one plant to another and then successfully have seeds. So we needed that little guy for sure. But let's put some lemmings down. Let's get some Arctic hairs. And let's get some lemmings. I think that this will be really cute. I'll put down one little group of lemmings. And let's go ahead. Oh, lemmings, hang in there, buddy. 
Oh, look at him. Oh, I want to get down here. I forgot how to get into camera mode. I can't remember how to get into camera mode. This will just have to do. Oh gosh, this is so exciting. It used to be you just like slid onto the ground and it let you get into camera mode. There we go. <gasps> They're so cute, you guys. Oh my gosh. Okay, hang on just a second. Fui, sorry about that. I was trying to change the key that I take pictures with, but I couldn't do it just yet. Uh, can I get onto the ground? I'm gonna have to look up how to get my little my little guy right. Oh, look at him. I'm eye level with everything now. Oh, this is so fun. <gasps> look at you. Oh, you guys are so cute. All right, so we have Arctic hairs, and let's go check out our lemmings. Oh, they're so fat. Oh, they're so adorable. They look like they look like the little pika and yet they're not the little pika. Oh, they're so cute. And all these plants, wonderful. So I wonder what the Arctic hares are actually going to try to do first. Are they gonna come over and try to eat some things? Looks like the lemming population's doing okay. Oh, look at how far everybody is going. Well, I can spread out some of the plants to kind of compensate for the way that they're all skittering around the place. So let's get maybe some more bear berries scattered around. Whoops, let's see. Let's put them over there. We probably want more bear berries pretty much everywhere because they seem like a good thing for the Arctic hares to eat. Maybe some more white spruce here and there too. That would provide cover. It would also be good. It looks like they might eat some leaves off of it. So you can click on each of the different icons for the animals to see how the health of your territory is doing. We have 22 re weeks until reproduction on the Arctic hare territory. Their hunger is in the green. It's about 85%. So I think some of them are off to go find food. Let's see what they're doing. Herbivore, hunger. Are you gonna go eat something, buddy? Are you just taking off? Do you even know where you're going? You probably shouldn't go all the way over there. All right, I mean, there's no food over there, but that's your choice. I'll put down some more of the random plants here and there just to see if we can convince them to eat. The bear berries, I feel like, are a safe choice uh, for some of the creatures. I don't know if anyone's eating yet, though. Are the lemmings eating? What do you eat, lemmings? Strict herbivores, lemmings mostly like to munch on moss, lichen, bark, and grass. Oh, so they probably need some more trees near them. And grass, huh? So is there anything here, maybe the field horsetail that would count as grass? The field horsetail looks like, like aloe vera-ish. It looks like something I would expect to find. Ah, oh, and now that I see it up close, I can see it's more feathery. Oh, are you gonna eat that little lemming? Oh, where are you going? Okay, so this lemming is hungry. Let's follow it to see what it eats. Aha, uh -huh. so it came over and it ate the diamond leaf willow. So now if we go over to the diamond leaf willow, you can see how some of its leaves are munched on. If it can survive long enough, then those leaves will grow back. And if it can survive long, long enough, then it will even get a chance to reproduce. And once it reproduces, then it will spread its seeds all over the place. Oh, and it looks like this hair came over. Wonderful. So the hair came right up. Ah, oh, sorry. I'm trying to get like down so I can look at him because he's so cute. Oh, I'm gonna have to look up how to get into cameraman mode again because this is just adorable. But the hair came down so that he could sleep inside of the little patch of bear berries. Wonderful. So we're starting to get somewhere. This is fun, you guys. I've really missed this. And I apologize if I've been a little bit silly or rambly. With this cold, I just get a little bit goofy. <laughs> Goofier than normal, I should say. But we'll come in and we'll start trying to build our entire biome up from the ground. So we'll start down here with the low-level herbivores and we'll start with a lot of moss and we'll start with a whole... In fact, I wonder if the lemmings can eat the moss. Hmm. We'll have to keep an eye out on this moss. But we'll start with the low-level herbivores, we'll start with a bunch of plants, and then we will eventually be able to build our way up to the arctic foxes, the lynx, oh, I really want to see some lynx, the arctic wolf, the caribou, we should be able to see quite a few of the moose, but we need to make sure we have plenty of food for them before we put them in, or else they would starve, and they could upset the entire balance of the itty-bitty little ecosystem we have started. So thank you guys so much for joining me, and we will definitely be playing this somewhere, I totally forgot how much fun it was and it's clearly been heavily updated since the last time we poked in on it and I think it'll be so much fun to be back in the biomes before we start playing Taito online again very soon too so I'll see you guys next time bye bye